Good morning, you guys. Happy Thursday. Today is the 20th October 26th or 27th. Ooh, I would have to double check. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm back with another pregnancy update. Um, so I am 18 weeks in two days. My baby is the size of a cucumber. Um supposed to be weighing like six ounces and be six inches long so that's exciting um size of a cucumber so you know cucumbers range but i feel like an average cucumber i don't know um which is pretty big also the ears are completely developed they start developing at um i think 15 weeks but i'm 18 weeks right now they are completely developed so my baby can hear my voice in other people's voices and can even get um, like shocked or scared or anything by like loud sounds. So I will be mindful not to be blasting my music too loud, though she needs to get used to it. I'm so happy that she is a girl. Her name is Noni. Um, don't know why you take my name. Okay, her name is Noni. Um, yeah, I just had to get my hair done yesterday from my girl Nisha. She always come through and help a sister out because I have not been wanting to do my hair, y'all. Like, and I don't usually like hate doing my hair, but I'm like, I just don't even want to like start. Like, I just don't even want to tackle it. So she was able to put some cute braids in my hair yesterday. Real cute, boom, bam, done. Shout out to Nisha at Braids by Nisha. Yeah, Braids by Nisha <laughs> on Instagram. Um, so yeah, some other things, my lips are not as dry as they once were. They are still dry, um, but they're not as dry. Like they was real bad crackling. Um, same with my nipples. Um, they are not as dry, but they are still dry, <laughs> but not as dry. And, um, my breasts are not, um, as tender insensitive as they were because they really like hurt even wearing anything like regular like bras like how I'm wearing now was like not okay I was only able to wear like soft bras um or no bras at all so um yeah so they're tender still but not as tender like you can still touch them and they don't like hurt um so that's good so those things are still happening, but they just like slowed down a little bit. I actually have gotten a little more energy. Like instead of passing out at like eight, excuse me, which is what I was doing. I've been going to sleep at like 1130, which I still don't want to go to sleep that late because it makes me wake up later like now. Um, but I have the energy to stay up that late. So that's awesome. So I do have more energy, which is great in the second trimester. So I am for, like, I'm around because, you know, like pregnancy weeks are different than regular, like, seven-day weeks. Um, but I am 18 weeks in two days, which will be, like, four months, four months, two weeks in two days. So, like, four, a little over four and a half weeks, give or take give probably but anyway um yeah so yeah and then i do want to show you guys some of the products that i've been using and give you guys an update on um like the pillow and stuff i've been using so this um pillow the large because i'm laying on it so but the large i have a lot of pillows because i really like pillows but like the large big pink pillow that I showed you guys that had to like um inflate and stuff like that take two days or something to inflate I would say this thing is a game changer I'm sorry y'all <laughs> not trying to show y'all all the goods my bad let me put this up a little bit okay my bad um excuse me for that um so this pillow is a game changer. I mean, I get the best sleep and without it, I really don't sleep as well. I do need to get like one of those wedge pillows though that just wedge on the side of you that's just like kind of small. So like when going to my fiance's house, 
um, I can like still sleep comfortably because right now I'm like wedging to like decorative pillows, um, which works, you know, like I kind of found how it needs to be placed for it to be comfortable for her and I, um, but I really need to get another pillow. So, um, yeah, but this is definitely a game changer. Like I sleep so peacefully. I love it so much. Like I definitely plan on keeping this, um, for all of my pregnancies and I plan on having a lot of babies. So, um, my, um, Trilastin, the, you know, let me just grab it real quick. All right, y'all, I'm back. So my Trilastin, which is the stretch mark, um, prevention cream. Um, I really like this. I like the smell. It's really moisturizing. Um, I was like only using like a little bit, you know, being real, um, generous with it initially because i'm like dang this thing was like 50 bucks like you know but honestly i would be really pissed if i'm not using enough and i get dang stretch marks so i'm using how much i feel is necessary and i usually just dip my finger in it and like from the back side because i have long nails um and then just like that'd be usually enough like to just cover like the tip that'd be usually enough to get like my stomach my sides um, yeah, so that's what I've been using specifically on my stomach. I did use it a few times on my nipples because it is really moisturizing and it says it, um, prevents stretch marks. So I do already have stretch marks on my boobs, but since my boobs have been getting bigger, the stretch marks are actually like gone pretty much. And I'm really hoping that stays. Yeah. Um, but what I've been using on my nipples the last couple days is this by um, a small business called Nubian Queen. Um, this is her shea butter, which is amazing. Um, yeah, Nubian Queen Natural Beauty. This is the shea butter. And this is the scent African Plum. She has a lot of different scents and you can also get it scentless. Um, I've been using this shea butter for years now, just on my body, but I just got a new, I mean, I haven't used it Actually, probably within the last year because I went on a flight last year. I think like last November. So, yeah, about a year. And I just bought a new one and, um, you know, I couldn't fly with it and they took it. So, I haven't bought one since. But this was a gift to me, which is perfect. So, I've been using this specifically on my nipples. It is super moisturizing. Um, so, yeah, because my nipples have been dry and cracking and it's a hot mess, honestly. Um, but it's getting much better. So on my body, I've been using Olay. Um, I've been using there. They have three different ones. I've been using all three. Not at the same time, but now I'm on this one, which is the vitamin C one. Um, and I've been using the Olay um, hands wash and body lotion for like the last three months, I think. Or like, yeah, close to three months. So this is what I use on the rest of my body. Super moisturizing. Um, I also, before this one, I used the hyaluronic acid one. And, um, and the collagen one. So this is the third one that I'm on. Um, I really do like it. And I like the smell. It's nice and fresh. So um, I'm almost done with my third month of my Modern Fertility um, prenatal pills. I'm still using these. Um... I really like them. Still no bad, like, throwing up, side effects, um, bad feeling stomach or heartburn or anything like that. I really love these. I'm definitely going to continue to use these ones um, for this whole pregnancy. Um, and I love it. It is subscription-based. So, this is, this, like, right, what's in here is the last of my third month um, that they sent me. So, they just emailed me yesterday saying that my next three months is on the way so by the time i'm done with this i'm sure that my next three months will be here and i can just refill for the next three months also i have been taking um baby aspirin this is prescribed specifically by the doctor um it is 81 milligrams um you can get like over the counter baby aspirin too but basically baby aspirin helps um you not have preeclampsia after having birth um, giving birth um, and that is really common in black women specifically so um, to keep your I think it's something with your blood so to keep your blood regular so you don't like over bleed or anything like that um, they recommend um, 
baby aspirin. So I, um, obviously this is my first pregnancy, so all of this is new, but I'm gonna just take this um, like forever for all my pregnancies. Um, yeah, and you can, like I said, get it over the counter um, or you can get it prescribed from your doctor. Um, but yeah, this baby aspirin, so the lowest dosage, um, 81 milligrams is what they gave me. Um, let's see. So, also, I did start um, creating my baby registry two days ago, which has been so much fun. Like, I really feel like it's pretty much complete. Like, I do think of things here and there that I'd, like, just throw on there. But, honestly, it's almost 50 items. So, I do want to take a pause and might have to re-look at some things to see if I want them on there. Because 50 things is a lot. Um, and these things that I have on here are not inexpensive. So, I'm really hoping my family come through for me. Um, like, yeah, I have like a really expensive stroller, an expensive bed, and not because I'm just going for expensive, but I want it to be nice, quality looking, um, quality, like last for a long time. Like I'm really trying to get things that actually last for multiple kids because I plan on having kids like back to back, like all four of my kids back to back pretty much like a year or two in between them. So I really want these things to be able to be able to be able to be used for you know, all of them or most of them. So um yeah, the the registry that I have been using um is called Baby List. So and I really like my friend um told me about it that she made her registry th through there. Um and you are able to take products from any website like any website at all and put it on there so it's like one list but you can shop anywhere target amazon random one-off shops um etsy like a whole bunch of just random sites like i've been fine like i have saved things on instagram that i really wanted that are just from like one-off shops and even just copying the link and pasting it in there of the product that I want, I'm able to add it to my list and how many I want and then put it by the category. So like when people look at my my registry, they can choose what category they want to shop at or browse. So I think that's pretty awesome. So baby list is what I've been using and I've been able to add all of the things that I want. Like I said, it's almost 50 things. Breast pumps, bottles, pacifiers, diapers, um, the bed that I want, the stroller that I want, the baby bath, the nose suction thing for the boogers for the baby, um, diaper rash cream, actual nipple creams. I have like three of those in there. I'm sure I'm going to need those. Like, yeah. Um, and just, oh, even some like nursing bras I've seen. Like, I don't know if people usually put like personal stuff like that, like nursing bras and diaper creams and stuff on their nursery but I'm I put it there in case somebody want to get them for me because the bras that I want again they're like 50 bucks each so yeah and which is not too crazy um but yeah for it's like five different bras that I want so that that is a, a, a little grip um but yeah so that's that those are some updates um yeah, I feel like there's more, but you know what? I will just make another video because this one's getting a little too long. But if you have any questions, comments, concerns, recommendations, let your girl know. All right, bye. Okay, so it's still the same day. Um, I've just been sitting here in my room on the phone with the geneticist from Kaiser. And um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be sharing this information, like, for the world. But I just want to document, like, how I'm feeling right now. Um, overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. So, um... Oh, just so many, you know, life decisions are just really hard to make. And especially when you're making them for, you know, another life. So, um, anyways, I did some blood work. It's a lot of blood work that comes with pregnancy. <laughs> at least at Kaiser, I don't know. But anyway, um, 
I did some blood work probably about a month ago now and um, I got the results some weeks ago um, that said that my baby has a chromosome different. So um, she is a girl, but she, well, I actually don't want to speak out of town because I'm not sure. I believe she is missing an X chromosome. She's missing an X chromosome, I believe. That's what it is. Um, so, you know, girls are supposed to be XX. Guys are supposed to be XY. Sometimes you can have an extra X, an extra Y. Um, but she is missing an X. So I guess she has one X. I have to double check on that. Because I actually, personally, been so overwhelmed. I did not read the results. My fiance did. Um, even though it's been weeks now, I still haven't actually went in there and read it. But... Um, anyways, so, and I've done some really extra detailed ultrasounds that they, um, only allow during certain situations that happen during pregnancy and this being one to just rule out certain things. Um, that was a few weeks ago and, um, the ultrasound looked great. The baby looked healthy. You know, everything looked great. It was still really small. I think I was 14 weeks when I did that. Um... And everything looked good. So I was like, okay, you know, great. Because they were asking me if I wanted to do this procedure called amniocentesis, which is where they take this extremely long needle. Um, and that this is how they described it to me. So I would definitely like have something over my eyes because I would not be able to see. But anyways, they take this extremely long needle and they inject it at the lower bottom of your stomach um, to try to get you have the amniotic fluid that's surrounding the baby in your your sac. So, um, you know, and I heard that it is a fairly quick procedure, like less than 10 minutes, but I heard that it is also uncomfortable. Um, and then there's also a one in 500, like every one in 500 women that go through amniocentesis have a miscarriage. Um, so I was like, after that ultrasound and everything looked great, and they were saying, oh yeah, the spine looks great, skull looks great, you know, body looks great. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna do the amniocentesis because I don't wanna go through the procedure and I feel like the baby is healthy. So I just took another um, blood test, a different blood test that is for the um, spinal and the spinal cord and the brain, like to make sure that they're like connected and aligned and stuff like that. Some other blood tests that I just did um, a week ago and I've been waiting on the results. So my fiance specifically has really been panicking, you know, making me panic because um, last time they took a long time to give me results and I had to call and that's when they told me about the um the chromosome different. So it has been over a week. Um, usual tests come back like within a week and this one hasn't. So I did speak to the geneticist again today and um, she was saying that they it's still in progress but they're working on it and they're gonna get back to me today. So I pray to God everything is okay. But just talking to her and talking to my sister, you know, I am... Um, It's just a really hard decision to make. And the decision is basically to, you know, and definitely not to seem insensitive or inhumane or shallow, like not at all, but just, you know, realistic to my life and how I see it and how I want it to be. You know, and it's really a hard saying It's even really hard to think about, but I just really, really want a healthy baby and everything in me, like my body and my mind. And even God, I feel, is telling me that my baby is healthy, but you know, I am human, so I still have fear and doubt, you know, which is terrible, but I am a believer in God. Um, oh, Kaiser just sent me, oh, my new appointment. But um, anyways, so basically I just want to have a healthy baby. So 
it's either do the amniocentesis, um, find out if my baby is healthy or not, but possibly lose the baby, you know, if I am that one in 500 women and, you know, I don't know what my odds are. I mean, I do know what my odds are. So I, you know, but I don't know if that will be me or not. So possibly lose the baby, healthy or not, or don't do the amniocentesis and um, don't know if my baby is healthy or not. So the baby will come out and, you know, be great either way. But, you know, if the baby is not healthy and does have Turner syndrome, then, you know, she would have a different lifestyle. And I know that that will be really hard for her and, you know, hard for me and Jean as well. So I just don't want to say anything too crazy on here because somebody's going to end up watching this. YouTube, my family, my, my baby that's in my stomach. So I don't want to say nothing too crazy, but I just know that's going to be hard and I don't really want that for her yeah and they said 20 weeks is the best so if i'm gonna do it it should be in 20 weeks which would be like the first week in november so i scheduled the appointment for the amniocentesis november 11th at 10 30 but i am nervous nervous about the procedure nervous about the results but I think that it is, like, I think I'm really in my head with this, but I think that it would just be better if I know. I just think it will be better if I know. And then after knowing, I can go on to the next hard decision. But it really is a lot. It really is a lot. And I mean, ideally, like, ideally I can just like, like I've been praying a lot about this and ideally I could just calm my spirit enough to hear what God is telling me so that I don't have to feel this way. Um, you know, and don't feel like I need doctors because I mean, I've been in so many situations, so many health situations where um, like doctors just completely have let me down. They really have let me down and God had a different answer for me each time and I came out on the bright side. So it just, it is another like soul spirit thing that I'm like conflicting with right now because it's like, I really should just trust God. Like my body you know, my my heart, like my mind, like I'm not really feeling any actual worry if she's if she's okay because I feel like she is okay, but I also just don't want to be like I'm being too hopeful and then she comes out not okay and now we have to, you know, deal with her having this quality of life. Which means we're going to have this quality of life because, you know, we're going to be going through life together. So, just a lot on my mind, a lot of emotions, and I'm already, like, hyper emotional because I'm pregnant. And I'm also just an emotional person. So, just emotion, emotion, emotion. I'm already a super overthinker and... um I've never been faced with decisions like this that are so fragile, time sensitive, and huge. So I'm struggling. I'm struggling and I'm really trying to keep it together. <sighs> and run a business. Well, that's a whole different thing. We're not going to go to that. It's going to work out. Um, I did set the appointment. I can cancel if I need to, if I don't want to take it. But I, I'm kind of feeling like I should. But then I would just be like really devastated if, um, you know, I lose my baby from this. But then I will be 
not devastated, but a little heartbroken if I didn't take it. I had my baby and she was, she did have Turner syndrome or some kind of other chromosomal disease or syndrome that really affected her quality of life. Like that would also really be heartbreaking because yeah, anyways, just so many decisions to make and things to think about. So yeah, just 